Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing another what I've watched. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically this video series that I started on my channel in 2018 where I talk about all the recent movies and TV shows that I've been watching. And I was debating like quitting the series at the end of last year and trying to figure out a new way to talk about movies and TV shows that I've been watching lately. But then I just decided why not just continue to use it and just do it more often if I need to do it more often? <laughs> because I have watched a lot of new things since I last updated you at the end of November last year. And maybe this is why I had a bad rating month in January because I watched a shit ton of things. And I've just realized that like maybe that's why I've just not been doing the best reading lately because I've I've just been watching a lot of TV and a lot of movies. So let's just jump right into the TV first. One of the TV shows that I got absolutely obsessed with at the end of December was You season two, which is surprising to me because I watched the entire first season of You and I wasn't a huge fan of the first season. I just felt like it was a cheesy lifetime drama and it just wasn't really my thing. Like I felt like they didn't do the book justice because the book You is one of my favorite books of all time. And then it's interesting because the second season of You, since it was done by Netflix instead of Lifetime, I feel like the second season was so much better and it actually felt like the true Joe Goldberg character was coming through and I loved the character Love. She's so fascinating and so interesting and I love that actress from The Haunting of Hill House. And I just feel like the second season as a whole is just so much better in my opinion than the first season. Like the first season just felt so cheesy to me and I didn't like any of the characters really. But the second season was just a whole different game. And it's crazy because I actually read the second book as well, Hidden Bodies, and I didn't enjoy Hidden Bodies as much as the book You. But for some reason it worked so much better as a TV show in my opinion and wow, I just, I loved this show so much. It kind of gave me like Dexter vibes, like, but I just, I love Joe Goldberg's character. I think he's really, really interesting to watch. And I just, I was obsessed with the second season. I flew through it in like three days. Another show that I was watching at the end of last year is The Morning Show. And this is one of Apple TV's like newest shows. And this show is also just so freaking good. Like this one definitely made its way onto like my all time favorite TV shows list because I love Jennifer Aniston. I love Reese Witherspoon and I love Steve Carell and he's so good in this. I'm so stoked that this one has been winning like many awards on all these award shows because The Morning Show is just amazing. And I feel like like it's so relevant right now, you know, because if you didn't know what the show is even about, it's kind of about how Steve Carell's character, who's this big news anchor, gets accused of sexual assault from many different women. And so the news station fires him and it's like this huge deal and it's this really big thing for the morning show. And so we kind of get to go behind the scenes and see all the craziness of the result of that. And Jennifer Aniston plays his other like news anchor that was like his partner on the screen. And this show is just great. It's so, so good. It's very hard hitting and very hard to watch at times. I've lately discovered that I'm really, really fascinated by any movies or TV shows that take place in like a newsroom. Like I just love it so much. Like it's very like high stakes, high energy and just like crazy to watch. Another Apple TV show that I've been getting into is the show called Servant. And the reason why I was interested in this one is because it's actually directed by M. Night Shyamalan, who is like one of the best horror directors out there. So I was really interested in watching a show from him. And this show is like really, really interesting and really crazy and really weird and creepy. And this show is about this woman who has lost her son, like her baby got killed. And she's really suffering through a really difficult depression because of that. So the therapist recommends this baby doll that they can get that will at least like feel like a real baby for a while until she's able to like cope and move on and then the woman starts to behave as if this baby is a real legitimate baby and she like hires a nanny to come and take care of it and it's just a doll and it's like this show is just so interesting and there's like a good plot twist at the end of like every single episode so i'm very hooked i haven't finished it yet but i'm very curious to see where it's going i'm almost done i only have like a few episodes left and it's really good and really creepy and I want to see how it ends. <laughs> and then the next three shows that I've been watching have all been kind of like reality shows on Netflix. The first one is going to be Cheer, which is this really fun reality cheerleading competition show. And I've always had like a major fascination with like cheerleading ever since I was obsessed with like All or Nothing when I was a kid, you know? But this show is just really cool. It's like a very documentary style 
show showing you like all the struggles that these cheerleaders go through on a daily basis and how hard it is on their bodies and how epic their performances are. And the show was really, really fascinating. And I feel like I learned a whole lot about cheerleading and it was just a really cool experience. So I highly recommend the show. And then another one I've been watching is The Circle. And me and my sister literally binge watched this entire show in one day. Like we just got hooked into it. And this one is kind of like a game show on Netflix where these people have to like become the most popular in social media and they only talk to the other contestants using social media. It's just very interesting. And I love like weird social experiments like this. So I was just very hooked into the show right away. I don't know. I think I would do terrible on this show because I suck at being social, but it's really interesting to see how other people handle this kind of stuff. So I really enjoyed this one. I know it's kind of cheesy, but I, I personally loved it. <laughs> and then the last TV show that I have to talk about is this documentary called Don't Fuck With Cats. And this one's also on Netflix. And this one is this crazy true story about this serial killer who the internet kind of tracked down because he posted these gruesome, awful, violent videos on Facebook of him like torturing and killing cats. Because of that, everyone was completely outraged and trying to track him down. And they were like, this behavior is gonna lead to him killing people like humans and nobody like the police and nobody did anything about it. And then before you know it, he was eventually killing humans. And then this story is about how like these people on the internet were able to track this guy down. It's just such a fascinating story. Like I really, really enjoyed it. It's only three episodes long, so you can finish it all easily within one night. Wow, I just had so many thoughts and I felt so like disgusted and just like, oh my god, a whole range of emotions watching this. Like at certain points I was like crying and at certain points I was filled with so much rage. It was like, oh my god, it was just crazy. This show is just really, really intense, but it was so good. It was so freaking good. All right, and then the next thing I want to talk about is all the movies that I've seen since November last year. So this is actually going to be catching you up on a lot of the Oscar nominated movies that I've been able to see in these last like two months or so. So you might see a lot of the movies that I did mention on my favorite movies of the year video that I posted. I'll link that down below if you missed that video that I did with my sister, like that video was so much fun. So you might see some of those movies mentioned on here right now because I am catching you up since the end of November. So. so yeah, so the first movie I wanted to mention is Frozen 2. I really enjoyed this movie. I know like some people are saying it's like not that great and whatever, but I personally just like love Elsa's character so much and I love the sister relationship between Anna and Elsa. It's just one of my favorite things. I had a whole lot of fun with this movie. I really love Olaf's character as always and I just thought it was really fun and really cute and just one of my favorites. And then the next movie I saw was Last Christmas. I actually did go and see this one with my mom and I saw this one because I wanted to go like go and see a cute Christmas movie and like get in the Christmas spirit but whew, this movie was just not <laughs> for me. This movie was just really cheesy and like while the acting in it was fine, it was just like the plot of it was just so like, ugh. And then I felt like a lot of it was really like problematic. Like the main character freaking outs her sister as like a punishment towards her. It was just very distasteful. Like it was very like, Ugh, cringy. The end of this movie, like the plot twist was like so cheesy. Like I couldn't deal with that. Yeah, it was it was just very, very cheesy. It wasn't really my thing. <laughs> and then the next movie I watched was Fractured. And that was actually this Netflix movie that I thought would be terrible. Like I genuinely thought it was gonna suck. And then it ended up being pretty good actually. Like I was very invested in the mystery of this because this one's about this guy who has to go to the hospital because his daughter just like fell from a high thing and like broke her arm and who knows what and he has to go and take her to the hospital and then the hospital has all these like weird questions that they're asking him and they're like asking him about his personal life and his relationship and like it's very weird and creepy and then after like 30 minutes he goes and he's like waiting in the waiting room and then when he tries to go and find them they're like gone and they've just vanished and the hospital employees and the staff are acting like they never knew, like he came in by himself and like there was never anybody with him. And this movie was just crazy. It was like reading a really good thriller book. Like it was just very intense, full of plot twists and I couldn't figure out where it was going. And I just had a lot of fun watching this. Like it's definitely like a more cheesy, it's not one of the best things I've ever seen, but like it was pretty good for a Netflix movie. I dug it. And the next movie I watched was Knives Out which if you saw my favorites of the year list, then you know that this is like one of my favorites of the year. I really, really love this movie. I feel like this movie is just so smart. This movie just knows its characters so well. And the mystery of this movie is constantly like 
there's so many plot twists happening and I was just so surprised at every turn in this movie and the cast is huge the cast is so amazing and I think definitely the standout though is Ana de Armas like the main character I just love her so much I've loved her since Blade Runner she's just like one of my favorites now and I just adore her so much and this movie is just great it's so great the next movie I watched was It Chapter 2. I finally got around to seeing this one. It took me a while to get to it. This movie was okay. Like I can definitely see why people are saying that this one is way too long because it's like nearly three hours and it does not need to be that long. It definitely has a lot of like filler scenes and stuff and I don't think it's as good of a movie as the first one just because I'm a lot more interested in the relationship between the kids when they're kids as opposed to when they're adults. But I do still feel like this movie had its moments. Like it had some really great moments in it and I, and I do still recommend watching it if you're like a fan of it and stuff but I, I do think the ending of this movie was so freaking cheesy. I still did have a lot of fun watching this though and I think it's a totally like cool valid horror movie. Like I, I had fun watching it, you know? And then the next movie I saw was Ford versus Ferrari. I actually went with my family to go see this one because my dad and my mom and my sister are all like huge car people. Like they love cars. I really personally don't know anything about cars. Like I'm not major into cars. So for me, this movie was okay. I really did enjoy though the racing scenes towards the end. I thought they were very like exciting to watch. Even as me not being that big of a car person, I still felt like very hyped over the like last race scenes. And I really loved Christian Bale in this movie. I think he did really, really great. And I think the main issue I had with this movie, I guess, is that some parts in the beginning were so slow and so boring. And like Matt Damon is so Matt Damon. He's just so boring to watch. Like, I don't know. I rarely ever like Matt Damon in anything. And in this one, he was just very like the same as he is in like every movie, I feel like. So yeah, this one was okay. I mean, I don't really think it's deserving of a best picture nomination, but you know, that's just me. All right, and then the next movie I watched was Us. I finally watched this movie. I, I waited way too long to see this movie because this movie is freaking exceptional. One of my favorites of the year. And this movie is Jordan Peele's second attempt at writing and directing. The first one was Get Out. This movie was so good. I think I like this one even more than Get Out somehow. This movie, I love like when horror movies can have such a bigger meaning than what is on the surface. Like I love that this one has a huge metaphor about America and like our state of the world right now. Like I just feel like this movie's really, really smart. And I just love the way that Jordan Peele writes horror because I love his comedic timing and how he can really like break the tension with some humor. It's just so clever. And this writing is so good. Like I did not, I could not predict where this was going. I had no idea what was going on the entire movie, but I was terrified. And I think this movie has one of the best scores I've ever heard in my life. Like it genuinely gives me the freaking chills. And it's just so good. And where is Lupita's Oscar nomination? It's a damn shame, it really is. She's so good in this movie. Oh my God, she plays like two different roles too. Like, oh, she's amazing. All right, and the next movie I saw is Marriage Story, which this is a Netflix movie. This one's also got a bunch of different Oscar nominations and I'm very happy about it. This movie is so devastating and so heartbreaking. I don't know why I'm really into movies that are about marriage and like the way that a marriage can just slowly unravel and fall apart it kind of reminds me of like blue valentine or something like that where you're just like so depressed the entire time you're watching it it's just so emotional but i do feel like adam driver and scarlett johansson give some of their career best performances in, in this movie because oh my gosh like when they go head to head like they just feel so genuine and like a real couple like it's just so devastating and i feel like their situation is very real and this movie's filmed in almost kind of like a documentary style that just feels very real so i feel like that's why this movie is just hitting really close to home for a lot of people god this movie's oh my god incredible one of my favorites from last year as well the next movie i tried to watch is the irish man and i fell asleep three times while i was watching this and i couldn't get through it i did not finish this one and i feel like this is probably one of the most like overhyped movies in my opinion of last year because I feel like with Martin Scorsese like in movies like this, I feel like I've seen movies like this a bunch of times and I've never really been interested in a lot of the like mob kind of movies like this. Like, I don't know, they just don't really interest me. 
And then the next movie I watched was Hustlers, and this one was actually surprisingly really good. Like, I wasn't really planning on watching this one, but then when everybody was talking about how Jennifer Lopez might get an Oscar nomination for this performance, I was like, wait, what? And so I ended up watching it, and I really enjoyed it. And I love the fact that it's a true story. Like, I think that's really badass and really cool. And the soundtrack of this movie is really awesome because it takes place in, like, 2007, 2008. And so all the, like, throwback songs, I was like... A. And I don't know, I just had a really great time watching this movie. I love the way that it would like flash back to what was happening and the like the way it was told was really interesting. And I don't know, I just, I went into this movie with like literally no expectations and then I ended up really enjoying it. So I was really surprised by that. And then the next movie I watched was Bombshell. I know this movie is definitely getting a lot of like controversy and some people aren't really liking it because of the directing style and the editing style and I will admit that I definitely do have a lot of issues with the way it was directed and some of the editing is like really weird and it doesn't really flow well as a movie altogether I think but the story in this movie though I think is really important and really relevant and I think you can clearly see how something like this inspired the morning show like one of my favorite shows now because of these real life events you know because bombshell is based off of a real story like true life this happened it's just crazy you know like all the shit that women have to deal with in the workplace like i'm here for any movie or any show that shows all the bullshit that women have to deal with in a workplace when it comes to being sexually harassed by men and this movie was just heartbreaking like it was so good and margot robbie oh my god anytime margot robbie cries i cry i love charlie Theron as an actress i love nicole kidman i just feel like this movie like it could have been done better in my opinion like i didn't love the style of it so much but i loved the story and the message that this movie was trying to send i just loved it and then the next movie i watched was the lighthouse and i feel like i can appreciate the artsy style of this movie but i will be honest and say a lot of this movie went way over my head like i don't think i really understood what i watched i was genuinely confused at the end and even after like thinking about it more and like researching like other people's theories on this movie i still don't think I completely understand anything about this movie. So this is one that I feel very like iffy about. Like it was good. The acting was really good. I really loved like William Defoe's like long like spiels <laughs> at Robert Pattinson. I thought it was very funny. And Robert Pattinson's character is very like creepy kind of and mysterious to me. And I do love the style of this movie. I love how like old it feels and I love the way it's filmed in this like black and white square. Like it's very interesting but I just don't feel like I get this movie. So this movie was just like hard to watch because I had no idea what was going on. And then the next movie I saw was The Farewell. And this is one that I wanted to see because Aquafina won a Golden Globe for this movie. And I was like, holy crap, I need to see this. And it really taught me something about Chinese culture. And that is that when their elders are going to be passing away soon, like when they've been diagnosed with something, they, they choose not to tell them because they think that part of what kills you is the fear of knowing that you're about to die so it's really interesting because their whole family fakes this like wedding that's going to be happening and it's actually to go and go back to china and like be with their grandmother before she passes away and she doesn't even know that she's going to be passing away soon and she doesn't even know that she's unhealthy i think that concept is like really interesting even though i can totally see how it would be harmful but I just thought this movie was so soft and so cute and so beautiful and I really loved the relationship between Aquafina and her grandmother in this movie. It was so precious. All right, and then the next movie I saw was Little Women. This movie, I went to the theater to see this movie on my 25th birthday and I am so happy that I went and chose this movie to see on my birthday because this movie was life-changing. I mean, that sounds dramatic, but like, honestly, I think it kind of was because I've never seen or read anything Little Women and this was my first exposure to Little Women. And I just loved it so much. I think Joe is one of my most relatable characters of all time. And after seeing this movie, I have gotten out and purchased the book, Little Women. And I plan on reading that this month. And I just loved it so much. Like it's everything that I love in storytelling because I really like love that relatable main character in Joe. And I love stories between sisters and she has three sisters. I just love this like subtle exploration of Joe's sexuality that's not really even talked about but it's very like subtly there and I just really like adored the shit out of this movie I love Saoirse Ronan with all of my soul and I just love all of the actresses in this movie and I love that it's mostly an entire female cast and it's Greta Gerwig female director and where's the Oscar nomination 
This movie is just so, so cute. I loved it so much. I want to rewatch it every day. And because of this movie, I do want to read Little Women. I want to read Little Women adaptations. I want to see the other movie adaptations. It's just ignited this fire in me. I just loved it so much. And then the next movie I saw, I can't say the same, unfortunately, was Dr. Sleep. You know, after reading the book Dr. Sleep and being super disappointed by it last month, I had this gut feeling like, oh God, maybe I'm not gonna like this movie because The Shining is one of my favorite movies of all time, like one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorites. Dr. Sleep was just not good. Oh my God. I feel like not only was this a completely unnecessary sequel to The Shining, but it was almost like this movie was relying so much on the fact that it was a sequel for The Shining that it was just like embarrassing. It just couldn't stand on its own. The ending of Dr. Sleep, oh God. Like, I don't know why, I feel like Danny's character is so boring to watch as an adult. Like he just has no personality. And then Abra's character is still like, the only thing we really know about her is that she has The Shining and she doesn't really have any other interesting character traits. And these characters are just so dull to watch. Like, I don't know why, but I do feel like the true knot, like the cult worked a lot better in the movie than it did in the book because the cult was actually like creepy and weird in the movie. And in the book, I was just like, I had no feelings towards them, but I did like what Rebecca Ferguson was able to do with like Rose, like the main character that's in the cult. Like I did like what she was able to do with her. And she was probably the only interesting thing about this movie, but like, God, the ending of this movie is a hot mess it has to remind you like every three seconds like hey have you seen the shining did you know we're a sequel to the shining hey let me steal another scene from the shining that was relevant in the shining but it's not relevant here oh my god i could make an entire rant video about all the issues i had with dr sleep let's just say it was not for me did not enjoy <laughs> i'm gonna go watch the shining instead all right and then the very last movie that i just recently watched is the miss americana taylor swift netflix documentary a and i'm very excited that this documentary even exists and that it's a thing that's out in the world now because i am a major taylor swift fan as i'm sure most of you that have been watching me for a while know this documentary is just heartbreaking but it's also very like informative and it gives you so much insight into who she is as a person and what she stands for god it was just so sad to hear her talk about a lot of the stuff that she deals with daily on a personal basis that we don't really know about seeing her like finding her voice in politics and finally deciding to like use her voice for good it was just so inspiring and so moving and my god i just i felt all of the full range of feelings in this one and the way that this documentary ended on the song the archer i was dead i was gone it was just very very beautiful also love the song only the young i just think it's so like the lyrics are great and yeah i just really really enjoyed this documentary and i'm really glad she decided to like put this out there and when you're famous like to that level of extreme like how crazy it can be to have your life on blast always by the media and how exhausting it is but how she never seems to complain about it and she just always has this like good girl image that she cares about so much trying to be a good person all the time and i just like really relate to her because of that you know like i'm always also the kind of person that's like afraid of conflict and i'd rather just like smile and nod and agree than like state my opinions because i don't want to be controversial you know like i just really relate to her in that way so this documentary just really hit home for me i just loved it so much i just love taylor so much she's so genuine and pure and too good for this world all right well those are all of the things that i have watched since the end of november I mean, as I said in the last video, I'll try to do these updates like more often, you know, so that I'm not sitting here for like hours just talking about all the shit that I've recently watched. I also am curious to know, like the Oscars are coming up very soon. So I wanted to know, like, would you guys be interested in me doing like an Oscars reaction and vlog kind of video on Oscars day? Because the Oscars for me are like the freaking Super Bowl. Like it's one of my favorite days of the year. Like I'm so excited and me and my sister and my family get like really into it. Like we make some lists, like we're like, who's going to win? Who are we predicting? And it's like, it's just so much fun. So like, are you guys interested in seeing an Oscars reaction, like Oscars vlog kind of video for me? Or do you guys like not care so much about the Oscars? I never know with like a book channel if people would actually be interested in that. So just let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching. And please let me know what are your thoughts on any of these movies or TV shows? And what are some of the best movies or TV shows that you've been seeing lately? And thank you guys so much for watching as always. And I will see you guys soon with a new video.